Greetings, everybody. Welcome back to the FCS Prep Podcast, where we have real change right now. I am your host, Dr. Keith Fairclough. And today, guys, we are talking about how to not give up. And this is going to be part of like a three-part series. I was going to do it all together, but I really want to take it slow. Um, even if the podcasts are a little bit shorter, I want to take it slow and kind of delve into each one of the steps and teach everybody how to not give up because we hear that a lot right people say don't give up hold on don't give up don't give up and that's great that's a great rah rah sis boom ba that that's phenomenal but if you don't know the steps that you have to take to not give up then how are you going to do that thing of not giving up you got to know how to do it and so as with everything you know let me tell you guys where all this came from about a month ago now, I was still searching for my own like purpose, right? And it's like, well, Dr. Keith, you can search for your purpose. You have these degrees, you have this career, you know, these videos or whatever. I knew I wanted to inspire hope. I knew I wanted to help people, but I it, I couldn't formulate it into a, a purpose, a, a one line thing where I could, this is what my purpose is. I just could not do it. And so I was doing all these things and working in all these areas, but I just couldn't find that one thing that tied all together where it all made sense. I was on this journey and I was looking and looking and looking and looking and searching and searching and looking and, and thinking and writing and thinking and writing and really trying hard to find out what is that? What is my purpose? What is that thing that I'm here to do? And so one morning I woke up and I started listening to um, some videos about how to find your purpose. And the thing is, I wasn't actually doing it for me. Here's the crazy part. I wasn't doing it for me. I've actually been working with clients and I want to be, and I wanted to be able to show them and help them find their purpose, find the things that they're good at, what they're destined for. So it wasn't for me. And it just so happened as I was listening to it, as the guy was talking and doing his video and everything like that, it was a Ted talk. And it just like, boom, it just hit me. It just, just hit me like a ton of bricks. And it was like, my purpose is to help people who are on the edge learn how to not give up so they can fulfill their full potential and have the lives they desire. I was like, boom, it all made sense. It tied in the hope and tied in my careers. It tied in these podcasts, it tied in my videos. It tied in everything, my posts. It tied everything together. That one liner to teach and help people learn that who are on the edge, learn how to not give up so they can fulfill their full potential and have the lives they desire. I can't tell you, I, I haven't been excited like that in, in, uh, in a while. I mean, I guess I'm kind of excited on these videos. So, <laughs> but I guess outside of the videos, I haven't been excited like that in a while. It's something that kind of like lit me on fire and just wanted to share it with the world. And so it just, like I said, everything just came together with this purpose of teaching people how to not give up. Why do I bring this all together? Because what I found is that not giving up, learning how to persevere is, is foundational to making any progress in life. I'm gonna say that one more time. Learning how to not give up or learning how to persevere, however you wanna say it, is foundational to making any progress in any area of your life, whether it be your relationship, I mean, whether it be with your kids, whether it be at work, whether it be in your business, whether it be in personal development, whether it be in, in, in helping your community, whether it be in any area of your life. If you don't know how to persevere, if you don't know how to not give up, then it will come crashing down because you are going, we are going to face hardships. That's guaranteed. As long as we are alive, the moment we come out the womb, and sometimes people who are even before they come out the womb, you're already facing hardships. We have to learn how to persevere. We have to learn how to not give up. And I remember, I think I was in high school at the time, maybe middle school. I can't remember. I was young, though. And I was thinking about what my talent or gift or ability is, right? You know, because I'm looking at other people. I'm like, oh, they can sing. They can dance. They could do school really well they can do all these different things really well all these apparent talents and the only thing I could come up with in my life was I just I, I don't know how to give up my my special power my superpower if you will was just learning how to not give up just not giving up that was it it wasn't any it didn't seem flash or anything like that but that's just what I claimed my superpower to be when I was very very young and that kind of stuck with me it stuck with me for for well, I guess until today, you know, even till today. The crazy part is, right, I've always worked in my purpose. And this is just a side note for everybody. There's a strong possibility you're already working in your purpose. You just can't name what that thing is. I've been giving hope to people for a very long time. And it comes very, very 
natural to me. Almost as like breathing oxygen. When it comes to inspiring and helping and motivating people and helping them to kind of hang on, it just comes naturally. Like my, in my career as a counselor, in my career as a therapist, in my career as a motivational speaker and a podcaster and all these things like that, it just comes natural. I just didn't know it at the time. I couldn't put a, a label on it. I still have to say, it's a strong possibility you're already walking in your purpose. So it's not a matter of finding what your purpose is as much as it is labeling it so you know exactly how to move and how to um, cultivate it even better. Back to learning how to not give up, right? And then just why it's important. So just back to that, once again, it's foundational for any progress you seek to make in life. Because the thing is, we're gonna face hardships, there's gonna be things we have to face, there's gonna be things we have to overcome, and we're gonna have to learn not to give up. We're gonna have to learn to persevere because we're going to make progress, and then we're gonna hit a wall, and we're gonna face an obstacle, and it's gonna make us wanna quit, and we're gonna feel bad, and we're gonna feel sad, and, and we're gonna feel like quitting, and all these things like that. All the, we're gonna be flooded with emotions, we're gonna have people on the outside telling us, oh, you should quit, you should give up, it's not that big of a deal, whatever. We're going to have all these things coming against us. We've got to learn how to hold on, how to persevere. Even if you don't see a way out, we have to learn how to hold on, how to persevere, how to not give up. There are three steps that are crucial, that are critical to learning how to persevere, learning how to not give up. Here are the three things. For one, you got to find an anchor. Two, you have to set your mind to whatever the thing is that you are planning on not giving up on. You have to make a hard, fast decision to not give up and not give in and that this is what you are going to do. This is what we're striving for. This is my goal. This is everything. Right? This is what I'm going for. So that's the second thing. So the first thing is find an anchor. Second thing, set your mind to the task or the goal at hand and make a hard, fast decision that you're going all in for this thing. And the third thing is you keep trying, keep going. Even if you fail, even if you fall, even if you get hurt, no matter what, you keep on trying, keep on going. And eventually, whatever your goal is, whatever it is you're trying to achieve, whatever it is you're trying to make better, it will get better because you're going to continue to change your approach and everything like that. And I don't want to give everything away right now because, like I said, I'm going to break this into three parts. And today, we're just talking about the first part, and that is finding your anchor. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So what do I mean by that? What do I mean by find your anchor? What I mean by that, well, first, what is an anchor? An anchor is something that a ship or a vessel uses to uh, stay in place. So no matter what the circumstance is, it is staying in place. Place. And you could say edge anchors in other parts of our lives, or whatnot, like almost like a paperweight or things like that. But the, the concept of an anchor is it holds something in place regardless of the circumstances that are going on outside. Yes, the boat rocks. Yes, water gets in. Yes, it gets tossed to and fro, but it stays in the same place. The anchor holds it down. And that is the purpose of an anchor. So what do I mean by we have the first step is we got to find an anchor for ourselves. What I mean by that is that we have to find something to hope in, right? We have to find something that to hope in that's bigger than ourselves, something that we we have to hold on to that it's not going to change or it's so big that you are so important that you can't quit. You can't give in. You can't. So I know for me, that's God. And I'll share my testimony in a moment. But for other people, it might be your family. Maybe for you, it's like if I fall, if I give up, if I quit, then my family falls apart. For some people, it might be your community. For some people, it might be your country. For some people, it might be your brotherhood. If you're like in the military or some type of organization. For whatever, whatever it is, it's got to be something bigger than you. Something outside of yourself. It, you cannot be your own anchor. You cannot be your own anchor anchor. It's just like a ship. A ship is not its own anchor. There is something else that holds it down. So you have to identify what your anchor is. What is the thing that's bigger than you? What is the thing that when you are dead, dogged out and tired, when you are emotionally wrecked, when you are just on your last legs, you can look to that thing and say, I have to get back up because if I don't get back up, then everything falls apart. Then they won't make it. Then for whatever the case may be, or it's something that, hey, I can get up because of this thing outside of me. For like I said, for me, it's God. I can get up because of the hope I have in him. But once again, and, and here's the thing, it's not like saying you can't have multiple anchors. 
I would say the more anchors you have, the better. Not in a way where it's stressful, though. You know what I'm saying? That like not in a way where it's like, oh my gosh, my family is the, you know, all this burden, and now you know I can't take it anymore. I'm not talking about that, guys. We're on the other side of that. We're on. I gotta keep going. I got these people on my back. I got these children on my back. I got my wife or my, my husband or whoever on my back. My community, and and I have to keep trudging forward. I know I'm tired. I know it hurts. I know I feel lonely. I know I feel abandoned. I know I feel overworked. But no matter what, I have to keep going. And then when you do that, it, it, it draws out. Gosh, I'm 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 just I'm ah. Gosh, guys, I can't even right now because <laughs> I'm trying to slow down. I don't want to go into everything because I'm. Everything I'm about to say right now is kind of going to the other two steps into not giving up. What I'm trying to say, guys, is we have to identify what that anchor is. You know, I'll even give another example. Even in my marriage, my anchor in my marriage is just simply the fact that there's unconditional love, right? There is unconditional love. And once I understood that, it's not about emotions and feelings and all that stuff like that. It's about the decision and a choice. So my anchor is love, right? So no matter what happens, no matter what's said, no matter what's done, it's that anchor of love, something that's bigger than me, that decision's bigger than me, that holds our marriage together so that we're still together and we're still you know, a two-parent household for our children. And it, that anchor helps me to go through the other two steps that helps me to solve problems within my own marriage so that we can have a, a fruitful marriage. So you can have the life that I desire. So guys, so what I'm trying to say is you have to identify what your anchor is. And you have to make it very clear what your anchor is is you have to know what it is because guys there are hard and dark times that come in our lives and i know those who listen to me, you know exactly what i'm talking about there are times when you just feels like it's better for you not to be here i understand i've been there before and it sucks and it's hard and it, and it tears you apart on the inside and for those who have a hard time opening up to people or feel they can't open up to people it's like even doubly so because there's no outlet so i understand that but that's why it's so important to have an anchor because I'll just even in my own life. All right, so let me let me hop to my testimony right now, right? Let me hop to my story, my example, and my own life of an anchor. So growing up, you know, kids try to understand the world, right? And I think I, I talked about this in another video about how from zero to seven, you know, kids they take their cues from the outside world, and un unfortunately, it doesn't stop as they get older. They don't they don't go from external cues to internal cues. They continue to take external cues from the outside world and it warps the way we think and what we feel, what we believe, what we do. It warps all that. So this was me growing up, right? trying to understand my place in the world, my value in the world. And I couldn't find that. And I felt lonely. I felt sad. And, and I didn't have anyone to talk to or, or to process these emotions with. So imagine just growing up like that. I mean, some of you don't even have to imagine growing up like that because I think a lot of people have grown up like that, feeling misunderstood, feel like you can't be yourself, feel like you don't love yourself. Again, all these are, you can touch back into these in the, in the previous podcast that we have when we talked about self-love and unconditional love and things like that. Um, you can check out the other podcasts for more details and explanation about that. But that's what I was experiencing growing up, especially as a teenager. So now fast forward, right? I'm a senior in high school. Um, I got my car, you know, um, I'm in pretty decent shape. I'm wrestling. So it was wrestling season. And we had a, a practice at um, a community center. It wasn't it wasn't a school practice. It was like a club practice to get like extra practice for even better people. Well, I'm not saying with better people because we had phenomenal coaches. Our wrestling team was like top tier uh, my senior year. So shout out to you know everyone that was on the well, well, uh, wrestling team for the um, the Wellington Wolverines. So yeah, our team was like top tier state qualifiers. In any case, right? I just want to give a shout out to them. So in any case, so we are doing extra practice so we can get even better. And so we finished that practice, and I can't tell you why uh, the emotions started bubbling up because growing up I, I learned how to push down my emotions it was almost like I want to think of like a pressure cooker right you you're pushing stuff down pressure cookers they build up all that pressure inside it's almost like you know what cooks the food or whatever but and I imagine that with your emotions like there's something that you you put a lid on your emotions right you put a lid on it and like there's pressure building up inside and you don't know to so a pressure cooker that's it's it, it's a specific type of, of pressure and stuff like that. It's all it's designed to hold in whatever pressure is there. But the emotional pressure we feel on the inside, there is no design to hold that all in. When that pressure builds and builds and builds and builds and builds, there's not enough blockage that we can do to keep that from overflowing. So again, I don't know what happened that night. I don't 
remember anyone doing anything to me. I don't remember anyone saying anything to me. Maybe I was just in my own head. I'm not sure. But I remember driving down Forest Hill Boulevard that night. I want to say it was around like maybe 6, 7 o'clock at night, something like that. And I just burst into tears. I was driving down the road and I was crying, just crying and crying and then just Think, feeling that nobody loves me, thinking that nobody loves me, and that I'm alone, and all these things like that, right? So it's, all these emotions just came flowing out, and it was hard. And I can only imagine what would happen if I was able to stay in those emotions or I had no anchor. But I tell you this right now, I had made one statement, and I want to put just, and again, this is, I'm not trying to, you know, proselytize anyone or anything like that. I'm just telling you my experience and my story, my life. At 17 years old, I did not have a relationship with God, was not baptized, was not filled with the Spirit, nothing like that. Just started going back to church. It was touch and go. I wasn't connected. I'm just trying to give you the context. I wasn't some holy roller that was just been in church my whole life, and I wasn't somebody. I, I, I just, it wasn't me, right? For whatever reasons, it just wasn't me. But God, somehow or some way, I made God my anchor. Somehow, I made him my anchor. And I said in my tears, I said in my pain, I said, if no one in the world loves me, if no one in the world cares about me, I know God loves me. I know he cares. I know you care. That's what I said. And that was enough to keep me holding on. That was enough to give me hope to get everything back together until it was time to deal with it. It kept me going. It helped me continue to move on, to persevere. That anchor, you have to find something like that in your life that when it hits the fan, when you're at your absolute worst, you feel your absolute worst, you can turn to that thing with surety, with 100% surety that I can hold on because of this, or I will hold on because of this. Find out what that anchor is, because there are trials and tribulations ahead in our lives. They're going to require us to have something to hold us in place and keep us grounded. That's why it's so important. This first step is to find an anchor. Because, guys, I know we talked about unconditional love. We talked about boundaries. We talked about self-love. We talked about toxic environments. We talked about personal responsibility. We talked about these things. And all these things are extremely important. Guys, I'm giving you the, the some of the most important uh, things that we need to understand in life. But none of that stuff matters if we don't know how to hold on, if we don't know how to persevere. Because there are going to be periods, and some of you might be in a period right now where maybe you can't identify a source of unconditional love. Maybe you're still struggling to love yourself. Maybe you still have one of those three negative core beliefs that are just lurking inside of you and just tearing you apart. Maybe the boundaries haven't been set up yet. Maybe you're not ready to start taking personal responsibility. People are in these places right now. And all the great information, it's all great. It's all wonderful. But if you don't know how to persevere then it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to get to a place where you are exactly where you're supposed to be. You are healthy. You are happy. You are loved. You love yourself. You're able to set boundaries. You're on a great footing, a great foundation to launch out and have the life that you desire. Because nobody in this world says, man, I can't wait to be depressed. I can't wait to be anxious. I can't wait to feel alone. I can't wait to feel rejected. Nobody says that. Nobody believes that. Nobody desires that. We want to be loved. We want to be powerful. We want to be effective. We want to be valued and valuable. Like, that's the things we want. We want to help people. We want to make a difference in this world. We want to break generational curses in our families. That is what people say. That's what people want. Those are the lives we desire to have that. We have to persevere. We have to learn how to not give up. I wouldn't be here right now if I didn't know how to give up. I would not be here right now. Because guess what? A lot of times people say, oh, I'm not getting a lot of traction. If you all go back and look, you don't got to watch other videos. If you go to my page and scroll down and look at my videos, I've been doing this for years, making videos for years, right? I've been making them for years. Not consistently, I'll be honest, not consistently, but I'm making them for years. And you could see the views on was like one, two, three, five, one, zero, one, one. And a lot of times, I'll be honest, a lot of times those ones with one are like me watching from another one of my pages. So like that's been going on for years. Look at all my other social media and stuff I put up. Not a lot of stuff. 
but because I don't know how to give up. That's why we're talking right now. That's why you're viewing my content right now because I learned how to not give up. I'm not looking on the outside for validation. I'm not looking for that. I just know that I got to keep trying. I gotta keep pushing forward. I don't know all the answers. And that's another thing as well. You don't have to know all the answers to not give up. Sometimes you're not going to have the answers. There's gonna be a lot of times you don't have the answers. And sometimes you just gotta stay in it. Like I told you in the beginning, if I were finding my purpose, I didn't have the answer. I just stayed in it and I said it in my mind, which we'll talk about in the next episode, about setting your mind and making a decision, a hard, fast decision, how that's critical for learning how to not give up. But I said in my mind that I'm going to find my purpose. I'm going to do it. I don't care what I have to do, how long it's gonna take, I'm going to find my purpose. But again, we'll get to that in the next video. But for right now, guys, find that anchor. Do an inventory of your life. Maybe it's maybe it's a position you hold. Maybe it's something you hold dear. Maybe it's a belief you have. Find your anchor. Find the thing that no matter how bad it gets, it holds you down. It keeps you from falling completely apart. Even when you're at your lowest, it's the one thing you can look to. And it gives you hope that, dang, as bad as it is right now, I can keep moving forward. I can make it. Maybe not even another day, but I can make it the rest of today. You know, I know a lot of people in like um, the substance abuse uh, recovery programs, they'll say, it's not about, can I make it for a week? Can I make it for a month? Can I make it for a year? Can I make it for 10 years? It's like, I just gotta make it one more day. Just one more day. And, oh gosh, I, I can go into so many things, guys. But listen, I'm gonna let you guys go. I love you guys. You all are awesome. You all are great. You are phenomenal. Thank you so much for always showing up and showing me love. I really appreciate it. And hey, listen, I just want to let you know and give you guys a reminder. You can check down the description below. I have links to my other social media with other tips and hints and things like that on how we can just order our life and just so we can have the life we want and be successful in any area of our life. If you need that coaching or if you need therapy, uh, I know therapy is a little bit different because there's licensing in states and so on and so forth. So, you know, if you, but you need that stuff, right? I'm like, in Nevada. I'm licensed in Florida. If you need coaching, that's everywhere, right? So if you need that, you got my email down there, my contact information in there. You can reach out to me through Psychology Today. You know, hey, listen, you guys have a great, awesome, and blessed day. I look forward to seeing you all again or speaking with you all again. And y'all, hey, listen, next video, we're going to be talking about setting our mind and making a hard, fast decision. It's the second part of learning how to not give up. So stay tuned and y'all take care. Have a great, awesome, and blessed day. Bye.